What's up y'all, I'm Claire and today we're doing another stop motion edit in Photoshop with masking. First, to get started, we are in Lightroom. We've got all these images here. I'm doing some quick edits on this one image and I'm gonna batch edit these. So right click, develop settings, copy settings. Uh, basically double check that you have everything checked for what you would like to copy to the rest of your images. Click copy and then select all the images that you want to batch edit. Right click again, go to develop settings and paste settings. So this is going to batch edit all of your images applying the same edits together. Couldn't think of a word. It's gonna be a long video. Let's do this. All right, we're ready. Go to edit. Instead of just opening up in Photoshop, we're going to click open as layers in Photoshop. Now, this is going to take a second because there's all kinds of files, but instead of opening up separate files in Photoshop, this will open up your images as layers in one single file into Photoshop. Pretty cool, saves you time. So, these guys are loading. Gotta make sure they're all there. And yeah, I'm just kind of looking at them to make sure that they all made it over. Um, so this process I'm speeding through because it's kind of uh, time timely. Uh, my images needed to be reversed. So I'm going one by one, reorganizing all of my files um, to basically put them in the order they should be. So if anybody knows how to do this other than doing it by hand, let me know because this is how I do it and it takes some time, but it's chill. So. Uh, now I'm just going over my files, making sure they're all in order, and now I'm going to prepare my base image, or otherwise known as a slate. So I'm uh, just going to give it a quick crop as well. Uh, so basically this slate image is going to be the main image. It's going to receive all of the, the edits, uh, basically to make the slate look good. And this slate, or base, um, I'll use these terms interchangeably, I guess. Um, will be used to edit all the rest of the frames. So now I'm going and basically cleaning it up. Uh, as you can see in the bottom right corner, I copied my base layer. I like to copy my base when I'm doing my edits so that if for any reason I screw up, I can just delete the layer and then like recopy it again and start over instead of completely screwing up my slate. So what I'm doing here is using uh, the spot healing brush tool and cleaning up that curtain because it has a lot of like random marks in it that I didn't anticipate, unfortunately. And lots of crinkles because I don't own a steamer, <laughs> maybe in 2021. Um. <laughs> All right, now I'm over on this little marble background piece that I have. Um, this thing's really cool. It's supposed to be uh, stain free, but unfortunately I stained some, spilled some wine on it and it stained. So got to clean up all those scratches and stuff. Um, so now I'm just kind of looking at my foreground. Uh, unfortunately, some of the chamomile, as lovely as it is, dropped some pollen. So now I'm using the patch tool right here to kind of just basically reapply the surface from over to the left where it's clean on top of uh, the kind of like pollen-y area. So now I'm going over and moving on to the product bottles themselves. I'm just trying to get rid of some of these like hot spots that I don't exactly like. So I'm using the patch tool again and the spot healing brush tool, just going over little spots that I see because again, this is going to be my base image, my slate, which will be used uh, very shortly to edit the rest of all of my layers. So I wanna make sure that this one really looks good. So going bottle by bottle, cleaning up these little bits, getting rid of the hot spots, making sure everything as clean as possible and just taking the time to do so. It takes a hot second. <laughs> By hot second, I mean a long second. <laughs> Getting some, maybe some like little brown reflection I saw on the white that I didn't like there. So let's see, what am I doing now? We're going to the dodge and burn tool. So sometimes uh, I like to dodge and burn the packaging or like the labels themselves. So I just wanted to brighten up these labels just a little bit. Um, Sometimes I go overboard with the dodge and burn, so I just try to do like a really small percentage of exposure change so that, um, you know, it's nothing completely drastic. And then 
I always kind of go back and like after dodging or lightening everything, sometimes I just like to like burn it a little bit and like tone it down, make it a little bit less bold. And just looking at my horizon line, uh, see if anything needed to be manipulated, but that looks good. Um, now I'm moving to the lasso tool to basically select all of the drinks in this stop motion because the drinks and the shadows of the drinks are the only place where there's going to be animated motion in my stop motion. So everywhere else that is beyond this selected area is going to be basically like blacked out. And um, now I'm just going over with my lasso tool and basically just fine tuning my mask because I don't want any changes to appear on my product bottles. I don't want any changes in light, um, but I am including that little like shadow on the ground because the levels of the liquid in the drinks are going to be changing and therefore the shadows are going to be changing, which I do want to capture because that makes it kind of much more realistic. So I'm just going over the martini glass, kind of trimming that down, getting as close as I can to the glass itself. Cleaning up that fake mojito. I'm gonna smooth it out to like eight or nine and hit the little, looks like a camera, I think, the masking button on the bottom. And uh, this little black thumbnail pops up. So as you can see, it's like a black background with like three little spots. Those three little spots are basically what's gonna show through in the mask, which are again, the drinks, the part that's gonna be animated. So. Now I'm basically applying the same exact mask to every single one of my frames. I'm doing this by uh, dragging the option, holding the option button, sorry, and dragging on Mac. And again, just applying that same exact mask to every single layer. Now I also need to copy the, the base layer because the base slate is going to be apply basically to every layer with the mask and this part uh, is super tedious the masking can take a long time but ultimately it provides what I think is perhaps the most clean kind of stop-motion animation that you can have in this sense uh, so to apply the mask to all of my layers again, just to kind of reiterate it because it can kind of be confusing. I'm gonna go and apply the mask to every single layer and make sure that there's a copy of the base slate to go with every single layer. And I make sure that the file with the mask is on top of the base layer copy because the mask is going to allow the, the file to be seen, but only the, the drinks as they show through and then the slate is going to be everything else that you see. Perhaps slightly confusing, I could probably, I'll, I'll get better at, um, I guess, describing that. But um, yeah, so I'm going through now and merging all of these files together. So I'm going to be merging the file, the mask, and a copy of the base slate into one. And again, this takes up a lot of time. Right now, the the file, the screen capture that I have in my video right now, this is set to like eight times the normal speed, I think. Um, so I don't want you to think that this is like a quick edit by any means. This took me at least over an hour and um, I kind of rushed it because I honestly already edited this piece. I re-edited uh, the stop motion afterwards so I could screen capture it um, so it, the original edit took me actually much much longer to kind of work everything out and decide how I wanted to edit everything but as you can see even though it's sped up it does take a lot of time I'm still merging all of these files to create one new kind of new file for each file together for each layer and I think that was the last one phew okay so I'm just gonna turn off the visibility, check everything out, make sure everything's in order. All right, cool. 
And now, since everything has been merged, I don't need this random mask layer because I don't need the mask anymore. Uh, so I'm just gonna merge it with the copy. And let's see, turn off all this visibility again. You can kind of see the drinks move in. Looks really cool so far. And um, I made a few copies on my first few layers. So I'm just going back and making sure if anything needs to be merged, which these last two do. All right, making everything visible again. You can kind of see the drinks starting to dance. They look pretty rad. Okay, so that's the edits. Whew. Now we're going to timeline. So create frame animation. Click that little box on the right, and then we're gonna make frames from layers. So every single layer on the right is going to become a frame within the timeline. We're gonna change the duration of each frame to 0.1 seconds and press play. And, oh, she's so cute. Gosh, I love this animation. I, I'm just so stoked about it. I love how those little chamomile flowers dance. And uh, as you can see, sorry, I'm like gushing over my own creation over here. Um, none of the background is moving and that's because we merged all of the frames with the slate layer and the mask. So it's, it's clean. So now I'm gonna export this bad boy. Um, save for web, make sure it's a GIF file. I changed the size to uh, 1080 by 1350 for kind of the standard Instagram size. So um, that's kind of my go-to. Even though uh, GIF files don't work with Instagram as of now, um, which I'll show you how to export a file for Instagram in a second. Um, GIFs are great for a website, but for Instagram and Facebook, we're gonna do what's called render video. And this is going to render the same exact timeline, but into an MP4 file, which basically can communicate and work with Instagram and Facebook and probably other social media platforms. And uh, that's gonna export. And here's the finished product. Woo, she go, just look at her go. Look at those cups. All right, I'm done. <laughs> Thanks for watching. <laughs>